This is Sage Left Planet, and I'm your host, Warita Wimbush. Today's episode is Jerry Sprinkles' tw- over 20 year old secret, 20 some year old secret. He had black kids. Now, his black kids were conceived outside of his marriage. He hadn't been long married to his wife when he had those children. And I have mixed feelings about it because he provided financially for his children. And he left the bulk of his estate to his two black children, John and Misha. That's wonderful. He had a video, a live streamed will. Um, he used to look like it was live stream, but he definitely had a video wheel where he announced where he had his lawyer play the video and his children were there doing a live stream or doing a live, like a Zoom meeting. And He left the bulk of his estate to his two black children and he apologized to them for not actually being a father in their lives. And he left some real estate, and I'm going to say in New Orleans here, you know, because in New Orleans, because I'm in Louisiana, I'm in Baton Rouge. He left, so that stuck out to me, but he left real estate, some real estate to his daughter that he had with his wife. Now, I have mixed feelings about it. I think it is good that he provided financially for his two black children. And I think it's good that he left them an inheritance because the Bible says that a man who doesn't leave an inheritance to his children is worse than an infidel. My father was worse than an infidel. He He was a good man. But now everybody isn't perfect. And when he was actually in my life as my father, he was a good man. But as my mother and I came to learn after he ran off and left us when I was 10 years old, right? He was also a big liar. One of his best friends, was talking about it and mom was, talk, was talking about how he should have stayed home with my mother and I and my mother found out a lot of things about my father like he did drugs she didn't know it and even throughout their marriage he was like a kind person but unstable it was like being on a roller coaster it's like we would be we live from paycheck to paycheck and would be from house to house home to home getting evicted and it wasn't because of circumstances that he couldn't control he wouldn't go to work he had a good job on the railroad kansas city southern railroad he was a brakeman then he moved up to being a conductor and that when he moved up to being a conductor and he also lost over look like probably almost uh, over 100 pounds at that time right and i'm gonna tell you how god move on that because in about a year or so, he had lost about a hundred and something, but looked like over uh, close to a hundred pounds or over a hundred pounds. And then, just two months, two to three months after he left my mother and I, he left us in October of, ni- of 1990. And then, when I saw him again in December, he came to visit me for Christmas, and my mother begged him to my mother would beg him to come see me even though he used to lie and tell people that she was trying to keep him away from me that wasn't it at all 
Now, when I would be with him, because I knew he was on, I was aware that he was on drugs, I was kind of scared to spend time with him alone. Because <laughs> I'm like, suppose he has some kind of freak, like, episode or uh, uh, something like that, or uh, attack or something. Well, suppose something like that goes on. So I didn't really feel safe being with him because of that. But because he was my daddy and he and I, up until he ran off and left my mother and I, we were best friends. We watched cartoons together. We used to go to the store and go to the toy station and look at the toys together. When I played with my friends, he'd be out there wild or good watching us to make sure nothing happened to us. The whole time he watched us, it wouldn't be where he'd be in the house and come out, look out, and go back in the house. No, he sit out there and watch the whole time. He used to let us sit outside and watch the, um, because we lived, at one point we lived in condominiums, and he loved to look, just look out, look out at nature and stuff, and love going outside. And so, you know, we got along as a family you know my mother had no idea she didn't see it coming with him running off leaving like that we just knew that when okay but here's the thing he wanted a raise on his job he worked in the baton rouge yard office here and he was a brakeman, so to get the raise, he needed to get, become a conductor. And so when he applied for the conductor position and things, he got it. But he had to work between New Orleans and Alexandria. He met a woman, and he's and this thing. He was working on the road, and he would spend like let's see we would take because we only had one car so we used to take him to work when he needed to go to work so we would take him to new orleans yard office and then we would um we would take him to the yard office in new orleans and he would be there like two days you know he would be it would take him two days he go to go from do his job from between new orleans and alexandria then he come home then we go back and pick him up and he come home the car we had a 87 seller 87 toyota seller the car got towed up from uh we at least we thought from it being put on the road but it was a stick shift and he started trying to teach his missed his other woman how to drive and they were downshifting the car and they stripped the gears so the car got towed up because of him and her he ran up our phone bill at home to over a thousand dollars in 1990 <laughs> calling her because when he was supposed to be going to work he was staying at when he was when he lied and said he was at work, he was actually at home talking on the phone to her. Then he put a phone in her name in Alexandria, and they that phone bill got ran up to five hundred and something dollars. And before and he ran up a lot of debt trying to be her sugar daddy. And before the bills hit. <laughs> That man hit the road, Jack. He hit the road because he knew if he didn't hit that road, Hazel was about to hit him. Mama was going to get him. One time, like, my mother used to shop. She's a BBW, a big, beautiful woman. And she used to shop at this store called Other Dimension. And she had a card there. And I remember my daddy... Because my mother didn't let nobody go in her purse. My daddy was irresponsible. He didn't pay the bill. He would forget to pay bills. He would lose his wallet. So even when I was a baby, probably, or before I was born, he started giving her his, when he get paid, he give her, he cash his check and give her the money so she could pay the bills. Because he would lose money or spend it irresponsibly. And in regard to his job, as a brakeman 
with the railroad. We would be struggling in debt and living paycheck to paycheck, but it was because he wouldn't go to work. One of his cousins worked with him, and my mother's my mother's uncle worked with him on the railroad as well, and they said that they were getting jobs. My great uncle, he was saying he would get the jobs. My daddy didn't. My daddy wouldn't take because he would be. Oh, my daddy would lose because he would be out part missing from work, riding them down the road, drinking and probably smoking and doing drugs with his friends. We had a Volvo. Well, they, because this is before I was born, well, my mother was pregnant with me. They had a Volvo in 1980. And they lost the Volvo because my daddy wouldn't go to work. And his pay, he would be where he gets suspended from work, doing stupid stuff on the job, getting suspended from work, and that kind of thing. Very unreliable, very unstable. My mother even cleaned up the house. When she had had me, went to the hospital, she had had me. And when she was bringing me home, before she left, she cleaned up the house. And everything was all nice and stuff. But when we got back to the house, my mama said, my daddy had towed up the kitchen trying to cook alligator, and it was real funky up in the house, up in uh up in the house where we had a condo. But it was real funky up in there, and she had to do a whole bunch of cleaning and stuff. Even though she had to, it had just come back home with a newborn baby. What fool does that? What fool does and he used to do that all the time. He was very nasty. A very nasty man. Very nasty. He used to leave skid marks on the furniture from not cleaning his black behind. My mother used to see me about to go sit in his chair. And it's like she had a look on her face like, no, it used to get do her, used to quickly grab me or tell me, uh-uh, don't sit on Clarence's chair. And when I got older, she explained to me why not to sit on his chair. And when I looked, I'm like, that's what these little stains are and then <laughs> He, used, he started smoking cigarettes and would leave cigarette burns all on the furniture. He leaves cigarette burns on the car seats. His friends would leave them on the car seats. Then he'd be, they'd be drinking and spilling wine and the wine was sour. And when my mama was pregnant with me, she said she'd be so nauseated riding in the car from smelling the sour wine and my daddy was like marvin gay where he was sweet but a jackass at the same time because he was making stupid irresponsible decisions that didn't just impact him but they impacted other people too. But enough about me. I'm just explaining. This is why I'm. I have mixed feelings about Jerry Springer because he did provide financially for his other children. But I think he should have been in their lives too. Now, even though my situation is different. Well, my daddy just decided, okay, I'm starting all over, right? I still think children need their father in their life. Even if my dad hadn't left, I still would have wanted him to have been in. Because later, years later, because he left in 1990 and he had his first child with the other woman in about 94. If he had had those kids in 94, my mother and him were still married and together, I would have wanted him to be a part of their lives too. 
at least I would hope that I would have. <laughs> because they didn't ask to be born to two idiots, basically. So, for that reason, I think Jerry Springer, you know, but I'm glad he did right by his kids. And then when I look at him in the context of my father, Tyrese, and ugh, Brian McKnight. Even my daddy didn't go as far as Brian McKnight. And he was a man who, when I first started college, made it a point to tell me, I don't have to pay child support for you anymore because you're 18 now. And I'm thinking, you did your best to not pay it and you didn't pay it the majority of the time. We we quit, me and my mother quit receiving child support and alimony from him when I was about... See, last time I remember us getting a check from him, and we had to get it gone to she because he wouldn't even pay what the judge ordered him to pay at all we ended up struggling and broke because he didn't want to pay the child support and Adam on the time out it was too much and I'm thinking who told you to start a go cheat and start a whole nother family that's not my problem and it's not my responsibility while you were cheating you done pawn my bicycle I had a flight time Barbie daughter that my mother bought me out of her paycheck and when he ran, my dog was in the car. He ran off and left and took the dog with him. And then I had to go stay with somebody who didn't mind letting my mother and I know that she didn't want us. My grandma, she didn't mind letting us know she didn't really want us there. The main reason she even seemed to have let us come live with her is because she thought she was going to have her hand out getting access to the child support and alimony my daddy was supposed to be paying and it didn't happen like that my grandfather used to because him and her were divorced he used to offer to my mama to come stay with him but he had got remarried he was dating then he got remarried and my mama thought that was awkward you know but i wish to god <gasps> Oh, I wouldn't mind if she just say, okay, Rita, me and you, we gonna go live with Hezekiah. That's my grandfather's name. Because my grandmother, ugh, always look, ain't telling you she don't want you there, but then always got her hand out. Every time it looked like you got a dollar, she wanted. Well, other people saying they want to help you and stuff, she pull mouth and about what all she need and stuff and then the help that you would have got she knows out of damn block your blessings being greedy and she did something so horrible and deplorable atrocious so an enormous lie on my mama and me and so i honestly wouldn't want to see nobody go through that or worse, you know. I really wouldn't. So, I'm glad Jerry Springer's, he provided for all of his children and apologized to his black children for not being there. And he admitted, he said, America failed them and he failed them too. Honestly, that was beautiful. I'm kind of wishing I was one of one of Jerry Springer children, shucks. And not to get money or anything, but just to know somebody care and not trying to gaslight you to have a man in your life, even if it's at the end of his life, that's going to stand up and tell the truth and not be a pathetic sack of liar. And then, so, and to look at Jerry Springer on that video, I have so much more, I have so much respect for him now. And my previous video about him when he passed, I said he basically 
contributed to the decline of the of the culture of this country, right? And I still think that his TV show did that. It was horrible. And that he was a hypocrite because he accused people like Richard Bay and Ricky Lake of doing that. And Martin Downey Jr. too, I'm guessing. He accused them of doing that kind of thing. And then he changed his format. And it was way worse than all of these shows. Martin Downey Jr. was intellectual, you know. <laughs> but... <laughs> Honestly, I liked, it's like, the realness of Jerry had just went too extreme. The realness of Jerry Springer show had just gone too extreme. But aside from that, right, aside from that, I I got a, I got a lot of respect for Jerry, especially when you look at people like Tyrese on 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 Instagram and other social media whining and crying about having to pay child support. Tell me it's too much. It's thirteen. I'm like you Negro. You are worth millions of dollars, and you make millions of dollars every year. You are silly, and you look like a whole wuss. <laughs> keep it in your pants. If you can't afford kids, keep it in your pants. And don't be trying to be in a woman's face talking about you dating and all this stuff. Stay single. Stay single. To be complaining about having to pay child support like you was raped <laughs> and had to carry a child for nine months because you got raped and now you owe child support. No. That's not how this goes. That's not how that goes. And I'm tired of men and it's embarrassing because is the onslaught of black men out there complaining about paying child support and having to contribute to the household and things and, or wanting a woman to go 50-50 with them and then, you know, financially or find it, financially 50-50, but then not help her around the house and not really do much with the kids other than the fun things, you know, if they do that. That's pathetic. That is pathetic. So, honestly, honestly, it's getting to be foolishness. Now, this is Jerry Springer who, I mean, I say he he manned up and admit that, admitted he was wrong. Instead of going around trying to get pity and sympathy because he, because he didn't step up and do what he was supposed to do. You know. So I commend Jerry Springer for that. I commend him for that big time. What do you all think? Because, again, I have mixed feelings on it. And I don't approve of the infidelity whatsoever. Whatsoever. I don't approve of it. I think having relationships with your children is important. Because, like I said, up until, I, up until my dad left, my mother and I, Packed up his stuff in the middle of the night, and when we woke up, he was gone, and he took the car, too. Had gotten paid, knew we needed to make groceries. <laughs> took the car, didn't leave no money, nothing. So, I'm going to just say... Up until then, my daddy, to me, he was a good daddy. And other people seemed to act like they wanted him to be their daddy, too. Because he kind of was 
uh, kind of like, like Heathcliff Huxtable, but more affectionate. More affectionate, more one on one and affectionate. He was fantastic. Maybe it was the drugs. Maybe it was the drugs. I addressed the issue of him in more in detail also in the video I did wearing a blue blue and pink dress. Uh and the video was about the metaverse. Don't let the metaverse don't let the metaverse multiply. You see, don't let the multiverse don't let the multiverse or the metaverse multiply your porn addiction and your vices. Had on a blonde wig then. And so, <laughs> check it out. I'll include a link to it in the description. And it'll be on the card at the end of the video. But yeah, I wanted to discuss that. And Brian McKnight is absolutely disgusting. Because, like I said, even my daddy wasn't that low. To where he would go on social media and announce that the children that aren't even his are the reason. Okay, first of all, the media years ago reported that he was beating his first wife. His children with her sided with her. They supported her. He acts like he hates those children don't want to acknowledge that they're his at all and has disparaged them in the media no bueno especially considering a whole lot of his music is boring and overrated anyway and he sound like he need to get some get some uh throat throat things yeah when the eagles forget how to fly, some foolish and tell my skill and love with you, whatever. Sitting there lying, singing, lying through his teeth and stuff. You know, at least Keith Washington admitted that with his first wife, he was at fault and he had a good wife. Even my daddy, on my grad, when I graduated during the time. Not even during the time I graduated. One time he was supposed to come see me. And he came to see me. We were living with my grandmother. And he apologized to my mother. And my mother told him, forgive him. And my grandmother told her she was proud of him. Which was saying a lot for my grandma to be giving a compliment to my mom and stuff. <laughs> so she said, oh, that's the dog one. <laughs> but, um, he, you know, he, uh, he even apologized to my mother. And I know back in 92 or 90, no, 93, when he took me to see Jurassic Park at the movie theater, right? Because even to me, it was awkward when that, when that, um, when the lawyer started, was with the, when the lawyer was in, was with those children. And he saw the T-Rex, he got out the truck and ran. <laughs> and when the girl encountered with i think that was jeff goldblum and if it wasn't jeff goldblum it was sam neal's character i know jeff goldblum's character they ain't ian malcolm oh i had such a crush on him after i saw that movie <laughs> i thought he was so handsome but uh jeff goldblum told look look they were telling she was telling jeff goldblum he left us he left us he left us and she kept saying that she was like traumatized and when that girl kept saying that over and over in the movie my i bet you my daddy was looking crazy even i was looking crazy thinking man awkward 
word because that's exactly what you done sat up here and done is what i was thinking just left me and my mom out there in the world to the wolves right and because he wanted to start a new life he acting like we the enemy you know like we did him something my light is beginning to dim oh it went out but it i mean you need your father in your life even when he do goofy stuff like take you to go see jurassic park and jason goes to hell on the same night even though you asked him to take you to go see him somebody should be the adult and realize it's too much i was shaking like a leaf when uh i went to bed that night my mom was laughing at me i was sleeping in bed with her and uh she was laughing at me later on and telling people how i i was talking about push, could you put your arm around me that's right because i was sleeping right by the window <laughs> and kept thinking oh snap what if jason uh the t-rex come through that window and try to get me <laughs> is what i was thinking but child, for times like that and he taught me how to ride my bicycle that he pawned during the time <laughs> that he pawned during the time he was right, right out having a fan and stuff me and my baba up there hungry and having to return our things that we bought and stuff to have food and you living off credit cards and stuff because of him trying to and like if that if that woman had known that basically my mother was the intelligentsia she was the one that was really holding and managing things right instead of having an affair with my daddy she should have run out she should have ran off and left with my mama instead because my daddy got as far as he did because of god's grace and my mother him but god and because god blessed him with my mother as his wife but uh, back to jerry springer this i'm not gonna say this triggered me to start talking about my dad and my and my mama but i can you know i can relate to some could relate you know but jerry springer seems almost like his tv show was like therapeutic for him because of the situation because of him having those outside children and looking at the video of him discussing tell apologizing to them for not being there in their, in their lives it seems to me that this show may have been therapeutic for him it really does like the show was really therapeutic because of the chaos going on in his life but it, you know but those are my prayers are with him i hope he gave his life to jesus and i hope his children all of his children can heal because i know what it's like to be the child of the first wife the child of the first wife gets treated like the bastard child <laughs> these days like you did something wrong and if you don't support fully support your father's foolishness and let him gaslight you and let his friends and other relatives gaslight you that you've been brainwashed by your mother like you too stupid to understand what's going on or have no comprehension and they're quick to say well it's two sides to every side shut the hell up 
You don't get to tell me about two sides to every story when you didn't live in the house and you didn't witness nothing. All you hearing is one freaking side of a story. That's all you really want to accept. And other than that, you making it. Uh, that's all you want to do. And you want to make excuses for that person just because they've shown you one particular side of them. You don't know the other side and you don't know what it's like to live with them. My daddy was a jerk shortly before he left. He would sit there and, and have this look like he just didn't want to be there. And like he couldn't stand me and my mother. He had lost more. Him and my mother were dieting together. They both lost weight, but he lost more weight than what she did. And he looked at her and me and said, I'll never let myself get like that again. And then he tried to fool us into dropping the child support and alimony like he was coming home. And my mother told him, no, I'm not doing that. And he said, well, he was going to leave it. She told, she told him off. You know, you get the out of here. And before he had left, me and my mother, we had got, because she had gotten on food stamps temporarily. And we had went grocery shopping. Before he left, he stole food out of the refrigerator. He stole our food from us. Now, when he left, he had gotten paid. When he ran off and left, he got paid and took his money and took the car. Didn't leave no money for groceries. Didn't leave no groceries. Right. That was the first time I experienced going with no food for days. Then... When he lies and pretended that he was coming back home, he, like, because he stayed there maybe a weekend or so, and a week, you know, pretending. And before he left, he stole food from us. I... I'm not married, and I don't have children. Many people talk about black women not being married, black women not having children. They educated, and they work. They're too independent. We have to be, because we can't. Looking at my daddy, Brian McKnight, Tyrese, and uh, some others, too, they are, we have to rely on ourselves because we got to be able to support ourselves and if we have to, and our children when we have children because we can't afford to be where we out on the street because we decided to depend on a man to take the lead and he unstable and foolish. So we have to be that way. My grandfather, and he used to be, he was terrible with my grandmother. He, him and her used to fight a lot. Now, I ain't going to blame him totally because she, I lived with her. <laughs> but... He had other women and he had outside children. But he still provided, and he didn't run off and leave. Got a, well, I don't want to talk about that, but he didn't run off and leave, you know. And he left an inheritance for his children. My daddy made it a point to only leave an inheritance for his two sons. I wanted brothers. I begged him. and I mean, I wanted brothers and sisters. I begged him and my mama to adopt children. My mother, you know, they she wanted to. I don't know about him, truly, because he used to lie through his teeth. And people believed him because he used to come across like he was so nice and gentle and stuff. But he was a big liar and cutthroat. Cause he's be trying to get me to turn me against my mama after he left, and I'm thinking I have to live with my grandmother and deal with some people I don't even want to deal with because of you. 
why would I help you? My mother loves me and is wonderful. Why would I help somebody who run off and left me and stabbed me completely in my back? We supposed to be best friends and you done run off for some skank. I'm your flesh and blood, but you done run off for some skank and some drugs. No. <laughs> So, it's important to have a relationship with children, and it's important for you to admit when you wrong, and it's important for you to apologize, you know, it's important for you to apologize admit when you wrong and don't try to gaslight people and this is what I saw from Jerry Springer he admitted he was wrong he did the right thing by his kids and he didn't sit there like a man child and try to blame everybody else for what was his fault But that's all I wanted to say on it. Didn't mean to talk about myself so much. But I could truly relate to the situation. And I didn't want to be where I didn't acknowledge his children with his wife. Neither. I don't know what went on with him and his wife. I really don't. But being that she was his wife, she deserved the respect of being his wife and it seemed like he was trying to give that to her as well but for his daughters that he had with her i completely empathize too and i'm not gonna let the fact that i'm black and go oh we dare had black tears no i'm not gonna do that because i know how it feels to be where you think somebody is like you know, one way and all the way team you. <laughs> and then, you know, you find out things ain't like they are. In my situation, they just turn on you at the drop of a dime. It wasn't a harsh, harsh turn like I hate you and all this stuff. But it was a, uh, he ghosted me, basically. That's it. My daddy ghosted me. So... It's a blessing, Jerry, from what we know so far. He didn't ghost y'all. He was still y'all's daddy, you know. So that was a blessing. Unfortunately, he ghosted his black children. But he still provided for them. Unlike, he provided for them, and he didn't whine and complain about it. Unlike Tyrese and Brian McKnight and so many others out there so jerry springer god bless you and i hope oh lord i hope you made it to god i hope you made it to heaven oh lord i hope you did i hope you had a wonderful relationship with god accepted jesus into your life and let the Holy Spirit guide you. God bless you, Jerry Springer. And this is Stage Left Planet. I'm your host, Warita Wimbush. And everybody, no matter what's going on with you, focus, please. Oh, and Flo Rida. Oh, Flo Rida. That, that funky clown. The, with the special, I'm going to talk about Flo Rida abandoning ignoring even just uh, displaying vitriol for his special needs child i'm gonna talk about that in the next video until then this is stage left planet i'm your host wabrita winbush please focus on god no matter what's going on focus on god